Now, before I let you loose on shader code, now before I let you use, now before I let you loose on shader toy and just grab any old shader, there's a few things we should just go through because this is not going to work with every single one as it is, um, and it would have to be extended for more complex ones. But I will just talk to you about a few little tweaks I've made. First of all, in the vertex shader, I'm, I said previously that you only really need one vertex shader, okay? Everything else you would just create a frag for and then pass that through um, a separate frag, keeping the vertex file exactly the same. Now I had UV in here as the out value. If you remember, I ended up with a bit of a clash with that before and things are called frag coordinate. So it's way better if we just stick with frag coordinate coming out of the vertex file and make sure that you actually just set it down here. Then you're not going to have issues with things called UVs in your frag file. So now over in the frag file, I've got a different one here. And um, this is a jellies frag, which is completely procedural. Um, when you bring it in, okay, these are the things we always have at the top. Okay, everything else below is shader toy code, but make sure that your UV um, that's coming out of here is called, not that one, this one up here that's coming in is the frag coordinate up here. Okay, so just change that name from UV from there to frag cord and then frag cord coming in here. Now, the other way we've done this, if you remember back in our mesh, our uh, vertices and our UV values going from 0 to 1. Some of the shader code is actually going to work with 0, 0 being in the center of the screen, which means you've got minus 1 on one side and positive 1 on the other with respect to your UV values, whereas these ones actually aren't. Now, you could change these values so that one corner is like negative 1 on one side and positive 1 on the other other or you can actually make a change to the shader code itself so back in my jellies frag here that I've got and I'll show you what it looks like in a moment if we just come all the way down to find my main a lot of them are going to have this line in here that chain takes your frag chord okay so we first of all we'd have to make this into frag chord like that this is actually very common this line here um, if you have this line in here, it's not going to work based on the UV values that we've put onto our actual mesh. And in fact, if you run anything at this point, let me run this, you'll tend to get the colors you think you should be getting, like I can see there, but you'll not actually be seeing anything. So it's kind of working, but it's basically um, you have to move those UV values over. So instead, you need to rewrite this line the same as it was in that clouds file, if you remember. So let me just um, grab the new version and just put it in here. You'll remember, because I pointed it out, you've got a GL frag cord, which is OpenGL, not us. It's not our frag cord that we've brought in here. And we're actually minusing 0.5 in... Um, both directions, the X and the Y, it actually bring uh, 0, 0 back into the center of the screen. Now, not all of the shaders you see will have this issue, like the clouds one, it's already set up and works absolutely fine. And I have found others that work fine too. But if you don't do this to the UV value inside of the main. Okay, so while we're here, let me show you how I'm running this. In my uh, main program, you can see that I've got my old vertex shader over here and the jellies frag just here. And if we press play, you'll see that I've got the same colors again. I actually really love this one. Look at this procedural jellyfish. They're just gorgeous. Okay, so that's that's beautiful and all. The final thing you need to know about which shader toy shaders are going to work with this code. Let's bring shader toy in. 
So this is a shader toy here. And this is the jellies one that I just used before. But let's have a look at something else. Let's go to, let's search for clouds, which are ones that I actually do quite like. And then if we find like this one here, that one looks really cool. But it has a whole bunch of different buffers and things. So this is not going to work in the version of the code currently. You can only go with a shader that has one image file here and there's no input images down here. Okay, so anything that has that down there, nope. Anything with more than the image file up here, nope, not going to work. Okay, so just keep that in mind as you go forward. So there's our like really nice vortex one that does work really well. This one here that looks really cool. Uh, won't work currently because look, it's got an input file that needs to go into it. So you'll just have to pick and choose until I come back and update these tutorials. But anyway, now you are free to go for it. Keep within those parameters and you will be fine. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.